My name is Jonathan de Saint. I'm a former soldier and an ex-priest. I was living in seclusion when I received a letter from Africa. It was a letter from my cousin Michael. We had served in the military together in Algeria, but had gone in different directions. Michael had written to me about settling down with his family in Africa and starting a farm. As time passed, he forgot about the war as though it had been a bad dream. Michael's description of his life seemed idyllic. Unfortunately, his happiness didn't last. Michael's wife, Margaret, came down with African fever. And Michael, despite being a top graduate at the Royal College of Medicine, was unable to save her. Margaret passed away and left my cousin alone to bring up their beloved daughter, Jenny. Before long, the fever returned to claim little Jenny. Although Mike finally found a way to stop the disease, he didn't explain how. Thankfully, Jenny recovered and the worst seemed to be over. And then Jenny became possessed, as Michael called it. He described his daughter's strange behavior and the mysterious signs that appeared on the walls of his estate. The last straw was a note Jenny had written containing just one word, help. At the end of the letter, Michael asked me to come and exorcise the demons from Jenny. He didn't know I was no longer a priest, but I couldn't say no to family. As I trembled in my seat on the old bus that was taking me to Michael's estate, I, I felt as though I was returning to the past. I couldn't forget the screams, the pools of blood on the ground, soldiers splashing through them as they ran for their lives. And I couldn't forget the moment when the world around me exploded. They said it was a landmine. That was my time to die. But the holy book saved me. Michael had given it to me before I'd gone into battle. A metallic splinter shot towards my heart, but the pages of the book stopped it before it pierced my flesh. This event changed my life. My fellow soldiers nicknamed me The Saint, and I devoted my life to God. But fate made a mockery of my salvation. I would get piercing headaches and I started seeing horrific things. I began to think the devil himself had possessed me, and that I should no longer be a priest. Now, a former priest who believes the evil one lives in him is on his way to exorcise a young girl. How unsearchable are his ways! His thoughts are beyond understanding. I have arrived at last.
Hello, sir. We don't see many new folks around here. Go on in. Don't worry about no one being around. Folks prefer to stay home during the middle of the day, when the temperature is the hottest. I'm here because I need to repair shoes as soon as possible. Will you do me a favor? Please, bring me a bowl of soup. I skip lunch when I've got a lot of work to do, and I live alone, so no one is going to bring me anything to eat. I saw all of this years ago, just before the battle that changed my life. Michael will appear in a moment, and he'll give me the holy book which will rescue me. Yes, this is it. I remember every scratch on the cover and... Oh, what's going on? What... what is this book? Finally, I was barely able to revive you. I guess you experienced heat exhaustion. I'm still not used to the high temperature here. I appreciate your responding to my letter, John. It's a bad idea to be in the African sun for more than a few minutes. Come in and take a load off. Your room is on the second floor. You can leave your bags where you're standing and go there now to relax. Explore the grounds later after you've rested. This will give you a chance to meet my daughter, Jenny. She's staying in the room across from yours. Now, I beg your pardon, but I must go as I'm very busy. We'll talk again later. No, no, no. 
Don't come into my kitchen with a travel bag, mister. I know who you are. You're John. We've been looking forward to your arrival. Are you really a saint? Daddy says you are. He also told me to leave you alone until you've rested or at least unpacked. He said that's the first rule of hospitality. Thank you, sir. I love presents. Daddy gives them to me all the time. He gave me this painting. Will you help me put it together? Please. Then we'll hang it on the wall next to my other paintings. Good afternoon. Are you John? It's nice to meet you. My name is Delilah. I would love to talk with you, but I'm busy preparing lunch. Wait, could you bring me a jar of water before you go? I've been so busy this morning, I haven't had time to go to the barrel with water.
Thank you, John. I know it's impolite to ask a guest to do a favor, but if I have to go to the barrel, I won't have enough time left to make lunch. Could you also help me cook? Please prepare the soup. Here's the recipe. It's easy to make. Lunch is ready on time. Thank you, John. Have I noticed anything strange about Jenny? Oh, I've grown tired of Mr. Jacob's questions about the health of his daughter. I'll tell you the same thing I told him. Jenny is a normal, healthy child. Now excuse me, John. I need to set the table. Thank you again for your help. In exchange, take this bowl of soup. It's delicious. Thank you, sir. How can I repay you? My father taught me to return every kindness. Unfortunately, all I have to give you in return are these nails. Please take them. They might come in handy. 